Hi guys, it's uh, Mr. Cox again from All Birth Live. Um, today we are going to be doing a quick, hello monster, a uh, quick reaction that comes up in C1, but these type of reactions come up across the whole course, so it's actually really important you understand how they work. And they're called displacement reactions. So, a displacement reaction is where you have the two chemicals together, um, basically have a reaction between the two chemicals, and one chemical will take the place of another chemical. So they basically do the switcheroo. Um, the golden rule is the more reactive chemical is the one that gets to be buddied up. The less reactive the one that's left on their own. But, uh, I will put a little word document with this that will have some key rules for you. Um, and also look at what to you in the video. So, in this reaction, let's tell you what we're going to do and then we'll do a little cut and we'll cut to it. Um, basically, we have three salt solutions. So, um, salt solutions, all the salt is a chemical made of two different, it's an ionic compound two different ions. So you've got a positive ion, which is normally a metal, and a non-metal ion, and those are stuck together to make one chemical. If you're in solution, dissolved in water. So we've got sodium bromide, so sodium is stuck to bromine, uh, sodium chloride, sodium stuck to chlorine, and sodium iodide, which is sodium stuck to iodine. Okay, so those are my three solutions. I'm also going to create another chemical, which is chlorine gas, which is very dangerous. The way we're going to do that is we've got uh, basically bleach, um, and in here we have some very nasty, very concentrated hydrochloric acid. Um, when I put those together, that will release some chlorine gas. So, in a second, I will set this up and we'll record it nice and close to see what's going on, and we'll talk you through it at that point. Okay, so here we have the setup for the practical. So, we've got a petri dish. Um, Bex, I've got a lid here. Here's the lid, uh, ready to go. In the middle of it, there's a little watch glass, just a little bit of glass that has basically some bleach in it. When I add straw, really concentrated hydrochloric acid to that, it's going to create chlorine gas. So that is our source of chlorine gas. Okay, uh, see this basically, all this is, is I've got my Petri dish and it's just sitting on top of this bit of paper so you can see what the chemicals are. So at the top, there is sodium chloride in solution. So that's sodium chloride dissolved in water. Uh, bottom right is sodium iodide solution and the bottom left is sodium bromide solution. So what we're going to see is effectively we're going to allow chlorine gas to escape. Obviously the gas will diffuse out into all directions. I will very quickly put the lid on to prevent the chlorine gas from killing me. Um, and effectively when it then touches those chemicals you will hopefully see a displacement reaction. So we'll see some sort of evidence that a reaction has taken place. So if we get the chemical reaction going, so I've got this really rather nasty hydrochloric acid, hence why I'm wearing gloves. And all I'm literally going to do is put a couple of drops. That will create my chlorine gas and very quickly put the lid on. Okay, so here we go. Couple of drops. Okay, and what you're seeing there, obviously, chlorine has a colour. So you're seeing that colour of chlorine. And then hopefully what you will now see is obviously the gas as it spreads. If we see over here, my little dots of what chemical here seem to be turning a particular colour. And it might take a little bit of time because gas takes a little time to diffuse. So. What we're seeing over here is this is started off kind of orange color, it's getting darker and darker and darker. It's kind of almost turning a gray color. If you see that top little block that I accidentally put on there is starting to turn gray. And hopefully over here you're now seeing that what was a clear dot is becoming a more sort of orangey browny colour and at the top nothing is happening at all so I'll leave that just for a few seconds and then we'll pause that and we'll talk about what has actually happened in this reaction okay so here's my board that I prepared earlier um, so I've got a little diagram here that kind of shows you what happens so there's our petri dish, the chlorine gas came out in every direction, diffusing through the petri dish. The blob of sodium chloride didn't change colour. The blob that was sodium uh, iodide went a grey colour, eventually. And the blob that was sodium bromide went a kind of orangey colour. So that was our result. What does that tell us? Well, a bit of knowledge, first of all. Iodine, as a separate chemical, is grey. That's why it was grey, because we were making iodine. Bromine is orange, so therefore why we orange because we were making bromine. Our key knowledge you need to know that I've read on the board here. Our reactivity, the halogens is the name for everything in group seven. 
in group seven, they get more reactive as you go up the group. So fluorine is the most reactive, then chlorine, then bromine and iodine is the least reactive. If you remember our golden rule of displacement, the more reactive one is the one that wins in a sense. It's the one that can be bonded to the other thing. The less reactive one is the one that gets left on its own. So, what therefore happened in this reaction? We had chlorine, we had sodium iodide. And this is just looking at what happened in this bit of reaction, in this, this corner of our petri dish. So, chlorine plus sodium iodide, which is more reactive? Effectively, we've got chlorine or iodide. Sodium's got a choice. It can stay stuck to the iodide, the iodine, or it could jump across and instead do along with the chlorine. If we look at our reactivity series, which one's more reactive? Chlorine is higher up, it's most reactive. Therefore, the sodium would rather be bonded to the chlorine, and therefore that's exactly what happens. In other words, chlorine is displacing the iodine. So, finish our equation off. Chlorine plus sodium iodide, we therefore get switch positions, we get sodium chloride. Notice I have to change the endings. Over here it's chlorine because it was the element on its own. Over here it's stuck to the sodium as part of a compound, an ion compound. So therefore we call it the chlorides, an ion, sodium chloride rather than chlorine. What have we then still got left over? Iodide is now our grey chemical. It's now an element on its own, so it goes back to being called iodine. And they've literally just switched over. That's all that's happened in the reactions. They're actually very simple. If we look at that as a chemical symbol formula, um, chlorine is Cl2, they go around in pairs. Sodium iodide, NaI, sodium iodine. Sodium chloride is going to be Na stuck to just one single chlorine, so NaCl. And iodine, a bit like chlorine, likes to go around in pairs. So you get I2. And if you're therefore quite bright and you're looking at that, you would probably realise, oh no, something about that doesn't quite make sense. It doesn't balance yet. So if we quickly balance that, logically we've got two iodines over here, so there must be two here. Remember, the only place I can put numbers is in front of the molecule. So if I put a two there, that gives me two of my iodines. Also now gives me two sodiums, so logically I'm going to need a two there, because it gives me two sodiums. It also now gives me two chlorines, which is brilliant, because over here I need an extra chlorine, so there's two chlorines on this side. So that is now your balance equation for what happened in this section. Of course, what we haven't talked about is what happened over here, which perhaps you should be able to do yourself now if you follow the logic in this video.